the creator of Kojo, uh, I guess, if you can see the screen, is Mr. Lalitpan, you can see here. Uh, he is a great guy, uh, just like most other people in POS community are. Um, if you happen to meet him personally, he is a very good guy to connect to, you can learn a lot from him. Uh, how many of us are students here? Okay, and how many of us are from computer science background? Okay. <laughs> Great. So, yeah, I think this will be a very relatable talk. Yeah. So, uh, just look at his bio uh, and what all he has contributed on. Uh, so, I, I don't need to say much because uh, there is, there is, the words sometimes can't describe a person. Uh, small thing about myself, uh, yeah, I'm a technologist. Uh, I work as a software developer a consultant, but uh, one of my major contribution apart from obviously uh, the programming language and my contributions to Kojo and other things uh, is uh, I happen to be uh, the first person in Goa uh, to prove along with uh, a group called GITP that the entire school <coughs> curriculum of Goa from computer, uh, like in a computer school curriculum can be executed on Linux on Raspberry Pi. So that was not something many people were ready to believe. They were like, no, we have to use Windows. The entire curriculum was explicitly designed saying Windows, Microsoft Office, explicitly written over there. And that was being a challenge to introduce open source. And that was causing a problem uh, because yeah, you have to pay Microsoft right, a huge amount of licensing fees. Uh, it was actually kind of illegal, you can say, because a government literally is saying you have to use a private company's uh, uh, thing into it. Um, use of Raspberry Pi is a very, very low cost hardware, and I'm talking about Raspberry Pi 2, not even Raspberry recent one, Raspberry Pi 2. And it was able to run all of that thing, including internet, word, word processing, spreadsheets, paint, everything which was there. Uh, we proved it by traveling across Goa, and that led to change of syllabus for 9th and 10th back in 2014, if I remember correctly, and uh, that introduced Linux and uh, Scratch for the first time in Goa's computer curriculum. So, let's. This talk is not about me. Uh, this talk is about this particular tool called Gojo. But why teach programming, right? Uh, I want to start by addressing that. Why why should we even teach programming to kids? And I sometimes take a, a position that we shouldn't teach programming. It, uh, it's like kind of an irony because I'm talking about a tool that does that. Uh, but hear me out here, right? Uh, programming on its own is nothing big. If you just teach somebody programming, right? Yeah, ChatGPT is going to take over. Uh, but there is something that is very, very critical about programming. We cannot deny the fact that it is important to learn logical thinking. And don't, like, you know, logic appears to be something very easy, it is not. If you really try to, uh, if you just need to do something right, explain somebody how to make a pulao over the phone. And if the other person gets it right, when he has not done it before, very good, you are a programmer. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's it. So let us see how we can make our logic strong by actually learning programming. And, and while talking about one tool, which is fully open source, let me also acknowledge other tools. There is uh, uh, Scratch, an excellent tool, uh, which introduces kids by, uh, you know, to all these concepts by letting them explore themselves. Uh, there are other languages like Python as well, uh, which is being used worldwide and uh, it's good, I'm not going to say it's not. Uh, professionally, we use it as well. Uh, then there are other tools like Sonic Pi and other things which is based on the Ruby programming language, right? So, then why Kojo? So let's talk about that, right? Uh, and again, this is not going to be Scratch versus Kojo or anything like that, but just purely about Kojo, what it can do. And let us see whether we see value in that, okay? Uh, the first thing, is it okay if I sit? So, the first thing we, we need to do, right, is, and that is what we do while we learn programming in even with the current computer science courses. The way we are taught is something called as an imperative method, which is you are sort of giving an instruction to the computer to do something line by line. 
So scratch, if you see, is a purely interpretive, uh, uh, interpreted thing. It is command based. Uh, you have the, basically every line over there does not give any output. So let me give you an example. We can do something very similar around here. So uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay. So let me just start by saying. Uh, let me know if the uh, size is visible. Let me zoom in a bit. So what I'm going to do now is you want to hold the mic for it. Hold the mic. What I'm going to do here is do something very very scratch type, and you might see the command familiar if you have seen scratch. Okay. So I'm going to move something forward and say 100 steps. Right. So there you go, and it draws a line for me. Okay. Next, I can do something uh, interesting like turn right and it will go up and turn right. That's turtle. Okay? I can actually repeat this four times, but there is better way. Uh, I can just do this, say repeat it four times and uh, yeah, auto format. So this tool actually supports auto formatting. And if I run this, it will draw me a square. All right. Now here is something that is very very tricky to do in Scratch. I'm not saying it is entirely impossible, but uh, the main thing it could do is just with a single line, right? I can say set speed and say super fast because you saw, right? It takes time to go around. So I can say super fast and yeah, it's directly there. Now you know. Sometimes just by combining all these things together, you can build various set of patterns. Like for example, yeah, so this is repeat, right? So I can just keep on going something, uh, uh, repeating something, and then you get a entirely different set of pictures. So I have a repeat four here. So I can sort of just say, you know, uh, repeat it something like uh, uh, 360 by 10 times. Uh, and towards the end here, I can just say uh, turn right by 10 degrees. So again, reformat, and there you go. So just a small change does, does something entirely different, right, for you. So this is how things can get very, very uh, interesting quickly now. But yeah, let's go back to the first, print, uh, first thing that we did. So repeat. Times move sorry, forward 100 and then turn right and it draws me a square. I have not kept the uh, set speed for a time being. This is possible in Scratch. Now, something that is not possible in Scratch is that you can fill the color. Right? So you can set the fill color and say red. And as it keeps going, it will start filling in the color. So you can actually start filling in the color in, in the objects that you are designing. That is something which is not possible in most of the tools which are there. Uh, but uh, from whatever I have seen with kids, no matter what tool you give them, right, they always find a way to make it possible because they don't know these things are impossible, right? So they'll always find a way. It is us who say it is impossible, but kids will always end up finding some ways. But beyond this, right? Uh, what also makes it even more interesting is defining what is called as a gradient, right? So, so gradient. Um, so if I want to define it, so let me say linear.
I want it filled it with this color. So yeah, I mentioned it, fill it with this color. And it should fill it with that gradient. Right? So now we can actually create something very, very wonderful with just some few commands. And I won't take much time going through all the examples because I already have something with me uh, created by people. So if you see, most of this stuff is actually created uh, to those means. But why should it just be us, right? Let us see what kids have done. This is a, a student from Goa <coughs> called Amol, Amol Naik. And take some time to see what he has done, right? This is all turtle graphics, by the way. Like that. Some more. Um, just to get some. some separate image created in some another tool, it's by using what exists here as well. Fully total graphics, right? Um, and this was something he did for the Sarah. So the reason I showed this, right, videos is this video has, the, what this kid did, gave us an idea. Um, so if you see, what he does is he first creates these uh, videos, then he actually has to find a music part. And then he has to go in another tool and do it. And that's a problem when it comes to giving a, a system to kids to express their creativity. That's not so right, right? But we'll see what we did there. Uh, but before that, right, there is a problem in this approach. And the problem with this approach is uh, there are multiple fronts. So let me show you something, right? So there is this set of crows that is being generated using turtle graphics. And how it works is you are basically, uh, let me actually just do one. So in order to do that, you would see how much effort it is there just to draw one crow. Okay. Uh, for that, I need to comment this line also. And that is where turtle graphics is a problem because you have to get the turtle back sometimes where it started. And how do you do that? So grow, let us say 100, I use 100 because it will make it much more visible. Take a look at what it does. It first tries to draw arc to the left, then it needs to come back, then it needs to again make sure that it is facing up and then draw it at the right end. Right? That's a lot of thinking. And then if you need to do something like, you know, uh, doing it across, uh, you know, those multiple crows like a scenery where they are, you see four or five crows flying across, that becomes a problem, right? So that ends up becoming a problem. So because, you know, it is possible, I'm not saying it is not entirely not possible, but take a look at what all it needs to do, right? You have to say, okay, start with the crow, then, you know, change your heading in this direction, move up, move right, set your size to something else, and it keeps becoming a problem, right? So how can we solve this? What if I can just take one crow, make an object out of it, and then start placing it elsewhere? And that is where the entire concept of object-oriented starts, right? And what do we learn in, uh, while we are learning object-oriented languages? Yeah, object is something that starts with class. And then we don't see why. So let us take an example, purely an uh, you know, imperative code out here. What I would now do, is I'll convert this imperative object 
a command into an expression, right? So the way I would do that is I will say, well, we have one probe, or I'll rather say define uh, single probe, and this single probe is a picture of my probe of size, what size did I start first, 50, right? And it doesn't draw. So the reason it doesn't draw is because, uh, yeah, as you can see here, right? The reason, reason it doesn't draw is because I have to explicitly now say draw this. What I could now do is I can combine the same image multiple times. So I can say def two pros and I can combine them into a stack. Right? We all learn stack, right? So here I will say there is this single crow and then there is this single crow that's translated, uh, sorry, that's scaled. Uh, by a factor of 0 0.75 and that's translate, okay, translated as in mood uh, 110 comma uh, 50 and I think uh, if I try to draw this two pros it will draw that for me and I can keep on going you know I can keep on building the same kind of a structure further so I can now say three crows and use two crows as, as the background for me. Uh, sorry, I have to start one being a single crow followed by two crows. So one crow and two crows is three crows, right? And if I try to draw this, it becomes three crows. I can keep on going like this. So it simplifies an idea a lot. I can use a composition pattern to do this. And there are multiple examples in which uh, uh, kids have done this. Uh, but a major thing that you can do with uh, 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 pictures, right, is the artwork that you can make along with this, right. Uh, and I'm not trying to say you can't do good artwork using total graphics, but let me just show you an example of what picture graphics can do. Just watch. <coughs> possible right again now this time there is no separate uh, uh, the audio is not created somewhere out audio is created right within this and that was uh, the new feature which we introduced uh, in Kojo just few months back uh, I mean, we started to work over it almost a year back but let me show you how deep we can go with it and let me know if you can recognize the music Thank you. 
Thank you very much. 